Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. has passed since Dorking's tumultuous defeat at the hands of Dartford. A defeat that threatens to dent the self-belief of a side some thought destined to win the league. They remain atop the table by weight of goal difference. Maidstone United are coming for them and Dorking can put not a foot's wrong in their pursuit of glory. Three games in the next eight days will set up the run-in. Hemel Hempstead are next. The side sitting in the middle of the pack, looking up at the playoffs and wondering if they can wangle an invite to the postseason party. But Mark White's mind is on his own team. Having watched some previous matches this week, Mark noticed his team has slowly evolved away from the combinations that led to success earlier in the season. And he's keen to get back to what made Dorking successful. Because football is like Chinese whispers, you know what I mean? Like you do, you start off with one team and you go through phases, and, and, and unless you're really focused on sort of good combinations and, and looking at that, sometimes you come away gradually from maybe things that were working exceptionally. Well, uh, we've had a little look. We've got real illness in the camp this week. That's the latest fucking problem. We've had a torrid season. Like, I'm starting to feel, you know, like we, this is like the biggest underdog season of all time. We've had the horrific injury crisis that gradually got players back at the same time as winning games. Then your, your number one striker in the league breaks his collarbone, then the number one uh, arguably player in the league does his ACL for nine months Briggs. Then Barry Fuller this week's been in hospital, misses the game. Fogden misses the game. Moore misses the game. McShane's on the bench but he's half dead. Shouldn't be there. The keeper's struggling but he's here. It's about a real like, you know, illness swipe through the team. So this is just about winning what's in front of you. It's just about doing your bit and at five o'clock see if you've had a result elsewhere um, so that's what we'll do today we've got a great team great brand of football so we'll be, we're gonna be great yeah and my point is 11 games and everyone our rivals everybody they're always playing teams that are competing so it's the same for everybody do you know what i'm saying there's a lot of twists and turns here we just need to fucking today put in a good home performance yeah so we get the warm-up really positive really really good <laughs> Baz has just got one rogue song on there. Literally fucking. Do you know what I'm saying? Have it anytime. The pro one, just have it after. Well, he's had about fucking 16 to be. He's had a video two minutes, he's had about eight drinks. No, don't give Nard anything extra. Fucking hell. Is that a man possessed? Who's missing, boys? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Just Dan. Knee all right, Josh. You've only got to be this tub two minutes, you get a fucking long term injury for life. Honestly, yeah, one, didn't you? Simon Rose, I think you spent your first season on a trampoline. Second one, wasn't it? Second yeah. one. The whole thing, we can see Rose over a training session like that. There he is. Highest paid trampoline, it's in Dorking. Goalkeeper Dan Lincoln has been suffering from the virus that's raged through the Dorking first team, hence why he's late for the team talk. Either that or he's been out shoe shopping. Come on, Dan. Fuck about, mate. That's what happens down here, mate. The wages, mate. Fucking top of the range, mate. So fast forward five o'clock tonight, and whether you've kicked the ball today or not, whether you're Briggsy Razor, you know, Macker, who basically can't kick a ball today, Whoever you are, at five o'clock tonight, FIP, everybody, you want to go home going, fucking yes, my routine's back. I wake up Sunday and I know we won and I can't wait for my next fucking game, right? We have to make sure tonight we have that feeling. So even though we'll have the bunny, we'll have the banter, that's it's a fun environment. Don't take that any other way than just the way it is. Let's make sure we switch on. Now, the good news is this. There ain't one team you can name in this division that is playing for nothing. Not one, not one. 
Billericay win one fucking game. There's about five teams, about four points away, five points away, that are going to be shitting themselves. And the playoffs extend all the way down. So not just us, but everybody in the league every week, that's going to be the beauty of this sort of last 10 games or more. Everybody's playing somebody with something on it, which is great. Really, really good. And it makes it a real competition. This lot, their form since he came in, this gaffer, is top seven. Okay, they're three, four points, uh, maybe five outside the playoffs. Good side, old school football, put the ball in your half and try and be better than you at competing and they're not bad at dead balls, we'll come on to that, okay? How well we have done to be in this position is a fucking joke. And I love that un underdog spirit. I'd fucking pay money to have that spirit, right? You know, we've had more fucking issues this year than you can fucking imagine. You know, fucking, you know the issues I'm talking about. We come into today, at least five boys are fucked. It all can't play. But it don't matter, it don't matter. Because actually it makes it even better, right? Even better for us to be successful. But to be where we are, at the fucking top, with what we've had to go through is remarkable. And fucking serious ability of you. A couple of things about our teams, right? Is that what teams need, they need the unsung heroes and they need the real fucking box office players. Your Briggs is a box office player. He's the one the other team think, fuck. That's now you, Jim. And you are a box office player, mate, on another level, right? So you've got to bring the aggression. You've got to bring the fucking tenacity. Because your team, I said to you a month ago, to all the boys, I said, and I, I remember looking at you when I said it, there'll be situations when you have to turn up now. Now it's your turn. That's your turn now, Jim. You came on last week, massive impact in just three minutes. Off the shoulder player, terrorise people, be assertive in making decisions. Whether you're going outside or inside, do it early, get people on fucking toast. And at the back, Ed, you are best player. People in these long seasons, I don't forget anything. You was our best player for the first sort of eight, 10 games for me, consistently, right? So you're coming in, long ball team today, you're gonna fucking clear it all out, <coughs> wear the armband, okay, and, and fucking get the distances right. They're hard working, Dan, they're hard working. That, their, their number one strength is they're really, really hard working, okay? So they're gonna try and put us in a game, which is fine down here, right? The best way to counteract hard working teams is to make sure they're doing it like without the ball by you just keeping your shape. Does that make sense? Teams that work hard, a bit like Dartford last week, teams that work hard, they want you to be a bit messy, a bit scrappy. They want you to play into narrow areas because they're used to just hunting in little packs and little areas. But we've played teams like Oxford down here, first half where we was unbelievable. They worked their tits off, but we had nine shots to their one because we were just going back to front sideways and all their work was just chasing us. There's a big difference. So we'll have to make sure we match the work rate early bell, but this week a lot more neat, a lot more tidy. Right, today I'll be back to normal, okay? Hemel, we've, we've had a good run. Um, to be honest, this will be shown afterwards, I hope, uh, we'll get a draw today, a way draw team that's top. We'll be comfortable with that, but we've, we've had good results against top teams and we're on a, a good run. We had a, a, a poor start to the season. Um, and so away draw, um, I'd be happy with that. There is an appetite to go up, and Dave Boggins has been the chairman now for well over 20 years. The improvements in the ground, um, huge amount being done. So the ambition is to get into the Football League. Having said that, I recognise the irony of what you and I have both been saying, that we love non-league football, because it's non-league football, and how do you uh, keep that? if you go into the league. So it's a difficult one. The problem is, but you're right, there are some clubs happier they are. I think in anything in life, especially as you get a bit older, you realise it, it's hard to stand still. If you don't move forward, you tend to up, end up going back. It is still rather odd for us here at Bunch of Amateurs to be told that people we've never met have watched our videos. So it was positively surreal to discover a group of mates had driven over 200 miles to come and watch Dorking because they're fans of the show. My name's Nick, I've travelled down from Lincoln today um, to watch basically the Dorking boys. Uh, pretty much watched the whole bunch of amateur series from day dot. So there's a group of four of us that have travelled down 180 miles to give this uh, 
to give this a whirl today and see how we get on. Yeah, no, we love the programme. I'm, I say I was originally born uh, Cole Shortenway, moved to Hawley, so I was next door to your original footage that you used to do down with Barks. Um, caught my eye on YouTube, uh, sent it to my mates, and then the next thing you know, here we are. We've, we've jumped in the car and we've travelled all this way to watch Dawkin. It'd be nice to see a couple of goals. Um, Alfie Rufford would to score that little hat-trick. If I get an Alfie hat-trick, I'll be happy. Uh, and the little handshake off Mark at the end. <laughs> so that'll be all right. Yeah, that'll do us. <laughs> There aren't too many Hemel fans here today to badger for an interview, but then we found CJ Johnson. Uh, CJ from Hemel Hempstead. Right, uh, big Hemel fan then, I guess. Yeah, massive. I'll go home and away, never miss a game. I'll, I'll be happy with a draw, but Dawkins a good side, but I'll be happy with a draw. Well, we were very attacking. We went to St Albans on Boxing Day, who are another good side, and we really went for it. Good away. Since Mark Jones has been in charge, very good away. Yeah, normally we take 30 plus away, but we're one of the loudest in the league. We've got about 30 here today. We really go for it. We're good fans, like to laugh. So yeah, we're really enjoying this today. Lovely ground, nice people. My uncle played for him all, and my dad also played for him all, and I've followed them ever since. So like, I just, I love non-league football. Really enjoy it. How come, why? Just, because uh, the pro football, they're all greedy and, the money that's there. With non-league, you can have a beer with the players. And look, these lads are great lads. I just really enjoy it. Are we coming in at all today, Dino? Yeah, they should be coming in now, four two. We had a fair couple of games. I know, it fell over. See, when it's wet, it's quite treacherous, yeah. Careful here. Unless you're a bad player, I don't say anything. If it's someone I want to get out the side, I don't say nothing. If it's a good player, I'm like, watch out. Otherwise, I'm like, yeah, go on, hurry up. Go on, Jimmy Mewitt, son. Match winner Mewitt, go on, my son. Fucking go on. Come on, boys, just fucking go. Real fast start, eh, hey, boys? Fucking real fast start today. Yeah. Let's fucking show them what we're all about. We're a different kettle of fish, boys. We're a different outfit. But we've got to get the ball down. Get the ball down. So don't, loads of information today, loads of communication. I've got a great feeling we're gonna fucking real neat and tidy today, side to side. Right, it's gonna be a hard working game, but we're talking fucking wonders, boys, okay? We're talking wonders, okay? And they know the time of day, they know what time it is, okay? So, don't be so eager that your discipline goes out the window in terms of like doing the right things. Can we be so good that our pattern from minute one is brilliant? <coughs> really, really good. But I'd like you to play with a big energy. Dan Lincoln, the energy starts with you. Don't slow it down, speed it up. Right, come on, let's go, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go, Jimmy, fucking turn it on, my son. Come on, let's fucking go. Come on, son. You give me a tea with a fucking tea bag in it. Ed, Ed, be aware of the wind. Wind. It's a sunny yet cold and blustery day in Dorking. Yet the atmosphere is positive and the frenetic energy of a game between two teams desperate to win will soon warm the hearts of the crowd. You shot in a diamond? Just sit, make sure it ain't a diamond. The little four, I think the little four might be sitting in front of the back four. Just have a look. Since discovering Josh Taylor's knack for throwing a ball really far, Dorking have had a lot of joy with the long throws. And in just the second minute, Taylor cries havoc, little knowing he's about to start a sequence that lets slip the dogs of war. You'd think this tag team special from Jacob Gardner-Smith and Chris Paul on Jimmy Mewitz might be a foul. Quite how the referee thought that was a fair tackle is inexplicable, but Hemel's counter is swift and Pierre Foncao teases the sickly Dan Lincoln out of the goal, giving him his very own Dave Besant, I probably shouldn't have played while I'm ill moment. It's a fucking foul! It's a fucking foul! We've got to sort this out before we are going to It's a fucking foul! Oi, we want a sub, we need to make a sub. Who's going in? Dad, we need Dan's top as well, so well, just there's tell there's him no to take fucking rush. There's no, no, no rush. He's need his top though. Is it a free kick? Mitch yeah. is going to get it. You've got to do a 4 4 1, yeah? DJ will be coming off. Wait, what's going DJ will be coming off. Alfie's going in goal. 
Listen, don't worry, David. I'll work the team out. Okay. Don't worry, son. What's Al going? Alfie, no, not you. Yes, You're going in goal. Yes. Relax. Relax. Is he good in goal? Alfie's all right, I think. No rush. That's a foul. It's a fucking foul. Ask them. Ask them. The fucking foul. Despite Mark's love of fine margins, the Wanderers don't have an immediate plan for how to deal with a third minute red card. So the coaching team are hastily working on a formation that will get them through the remaining 87 minutes. Ed. Ed. Why is it? There. We're going to need a left back. Callum. Callum. Right, Callum centre there. half. Centre half in there. Ed and Isaac centre half. So, he's so we need a right back. Oh, right back Listen. Relax. So we need a, so we need a centre back or a right back. Right Who's out there? The midfield three, DJ. So the other one's Josh. probably Sammy, isn't it? Well, Sammy, Sammy or Dan? Sammy. So tell him to go left back. So actually, it'd be Dan. So it'd be DJ off. Get Dan. Get Dan. Dan, Dan! Dan! Get... Oh. DJ's off, yeah? Mike Tyson once said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And after all the planning for this game, Dorking have just been bopped on the nose. So we're now going to find out if what Mark refers to as the Wanderer's spirit really is a thing. Alfie, stand your line! Mark in! Mark in! Put it out! Put it, DJ, put it out next time! Put it out, Jimmy, when you can! Put the ball out! Put the ball out! DJ! Just six minutes in, and DJ Oldacre makes way for Dan Gallagher as Mark looks to shore up his defence into a back four. He just matched up in there. Round the corner, round the corner, round the corner. Oh, Isaac, come on, quality on the ball, son. Get up! 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 Much like when you realise your online FIFA opponent's controller has died, Hemel are mad keen to get the ball and hammer the goal. But, like an overstarched Union Jack, Rutherford appears to be unflappable. Why? Alfie! Why? Alfie! They still got stay at home back four, so it's fucking perfect. Yeah. It's nothing, nothing. Yeah. We just need to stop shots. Obviously. Listen, have we got down out there playing? Yeah, 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 I've got it here. So it's 4 4 2. 4 4 2. But out of possession, it goes 4 5 1. The Wanderers appear to have settled both on the bench and on the pitch. Nicky! That's in! Hey, come on, mate, he's getting fucking stupid now. It is hard to defend Dino's claim that hitting the post should count as a goal, but the kick on Josh Taylor was, undeniably, a kick on Josh Taylor. Right, that's two now, fucking two, bollocks. Meanwhile, in the Dorking goal, Alfie Rutherford is, like a Catholic priest, enjoying the high balls. But we're going to hell. The visitors are doing a decent job of pressing talking high up the pitch. However, their efforts to test the diving skills of Rutherford are far less effective. Run! Alfie! Give me the wave! Hey, hey, Alfie! Man. Give me the wave! That's what we don't want to start doing. Yes, Jimmy! Show. Midfielder, show, Jimmy, show! Yes, David! Oh, oh, protect it! Oh, protect it! Oh, Higher! Oh, now move, David, move! Move! To me! Centre! Brilliant, Mark. Brilliant, Mark. Now, now Isaac, organiser's here. Josh, organiser. For the first time since the red card, Dorking build from the back and create an opening. Cal Kennedy's devilish cross finds Nick Wheeler, who ghosts past the centre backs to stab in from five yards out. Get it back! Come on, you no shots! Beardy's no shots request is somewhat redundant given that Hemel possessed the firepower of a Super Soaker 500. Leave the fucking thing! Leave it! The Hemel attack will need to be much closer to the goal if they're going to test Alfie's abilities. Hemel 
old striker Craig Fassenmade finally gets up close, but despite stumbling like he's in an anxiety dream, Alfie saves with his face. Hemel then attempts to bully the young striker turned goalkeeper, but their corners are, impossibly, worse than their shots. Aside from Alfie's saves and Kennedy's crosses, this is rapidly turning into a comedy of errors. Oh my fucking days, man. You are fucking joking me. We have to talk to Isaac again next week, so in all honesty, we're not keen on showing these replays. Jimmy! Isaac, don't worry! Isaac, don't worry! Next one, Isaac! Jimmy! Jimmy! Get there! A second goal would be useful, especially as Hemmler about to hit the target from range for the first time. Far too much time has passed since Dorking's last penalty shouts. It is time to remedy that. What the fuck is he That's doing? That's a fucking disgrace, He's mate. He's one of his fucking tits. You fucking like this, man. It's like that. That is the worst half all season. Really bad. Behind the goalkeeper. Really Two bad. Sit down, say nothing. Sit down, say nothing. I'm looking for any half measures in this team. David, I'm worried. For me, in your role, yeah. okay, and we'll take as long as we need to here, right? Let's just take our time. Nile and Josh Taylor on another level. Can we match that work rate out wide? Because one minute we need to split, next minute press. And the boys in midfield have shown you how to do that. You've got to match that work rate, okay? Jimmy, you've done brilliantly. You're putting a foot in. The six don't want to touch you. They don't want to touch you. Okay, Callum, don't do overlaps. Do not do overlaps. Be a setback, but don't go overlaps. We're one nil up, and we've had a 10 men for a long time. Don't do overlaps, okay? Right, listen, we're gonna cover both shapes because I think they'll probably change it to a back three, okay? Which is fine. So, at the moment, they're four, four, two, and one of them's dropping in. Is that right, the seven? Beardy? Yeah. Okay. So they're 4-4-2. Four, four, okay. David, yep. this is your game. Now, David, you could cost us the game. Because if you have one of those lazy moments yep. and let this bloke do this and chuck it here, we could lose the game. So we're asking you to get carried off on a stretcher. What does that mean? That means you've got to be fucked and throwing up. Okay. okay? Yep. That's how fucked you've got to be for this team today. Yep. Okay? Listen to me. Okay? We've got stretchers in fucking Switzerland. <laughs> right. What David should never have to do, stay with me, because this is a tactical thing. I, he should never, um, at all, this is how we should look, right? Four, four, one, right? Their overload is still just a centre half. Do you understand? Right? Now, what sometimes happening is, the seven's dropping in here, watch me, we're doing this, marking, and then they're going to give a David an even bigger problem. I think they're 4 3 3. Well, I've got, got, I'm trusting my guys here. Yeah. The seven's dropping in. To be honest, mate, I think they're. Yeah, I think. To be honest, mate, it's the same formation. It's the same formation. They're just playing high, Ed. They're just playing high. It's the same. It's the same. Don't make any difference. Stay with me. Yeah. Stay with me. So, once, at one point, David had that, you know, couldn't do anything about it. Okay, right, and then, and then the danger then, when they play that bloke there, the danger then is we then engage the ball and we give them another overload and they build the play, right? So for me, 
For me, we've got to be brave at the back, Ed and Dan, you're the key. Now, they haven't had a sniff. They haven't had a sniff, right? So we don't want to start changing up what we're doing too much because they haven't had a sniff and you boys have been brilliant. Alfie, what we're going to do now, last thing, if we do go direct because we can't play out early, then I want Kennedy and Philpot to be your targets. And just try, literally, with a keeper, it's just less effort. Literally less effort. Do you know what I mean? Just literally go up and swing a fucking, a fucking whatever it might be, a seven iron in it. Just bosh, bang. OK, if it goes out of play, don't give a fuck. OK, simple. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Nicky's side. Yeah. We'll do that your side, okay? But the one thing I'd say is now is that I watched Bobby. You'll play a big part in this game, Bob. I watched Bobby um, when, when I first met Bobby. He played uh, against Hungerford. They were two down at half time, and they had ten men. And the only way you win with ten men is to do exactly what you just done there is just to have more heart and let them run out of patience and let them run out of fucking desire. Let them run out of passion. Let them run out of it, okay? Be careful, stay on your feet, all the rest of it, okay? All right? So, listen, above all, we've just got to work fucking hard. Okay, boys? Come on, boys. Keep going. No, come on, class, mate. Keep If there is one thing we've noticed about Dorking, it's that they have a penchant for making interesting things happen when we're still changing the batteries in the Goldmouth cameras. And so it proves today, as Niall McManus is fouled and Cal Kennedy puts in yet another delicious ball. And having travelled 200 miles from Lincoln to watch the game, our very own super fans are laid back from their half-time beers and rather fortuitously in position to celebrate with the Dorking team. Cal Kennedy's fantastic cross is met by the imperious Ed Harris at the back post and he heads past the right hand of goalkeeper Craig King. Next goal! Next fucking goal! Next goal! Hemel responds to the setback as they have responded to each incident so far today by skewing a shot high and wide at the Dorking goal. Spurred on by the impressive Sam Carruthers, Hemel do begin to take control of the game. Dorking are stuck in their own box, although their opponents continually struggle to threaten Alfie. Listen, Bobby, insurance play. When you get a chance here, run the ball or hold it up. It's insurance play. We're two new up with ten. Right? Nothing's don't start trying to run through people, nothing at all. Defensively, just don't let this bloke move. Okay. In the absence of Matt Briggs, winger Jimmy Mewitt is under pressure to perform, and the man nicknamed the Flying Quaver is about to realise his potential. Kennedy! Callum! Callum, do you want it? The wand like left leg of Cal Kennedy is now in charge of putting Dorking into an extraordinary three goal lead. Mate! Oh, what a game changer that is. Craig King makes the save, and Hemel have effectively just been told that the last chance saloon is staying open for another, I don't know, hour, half hour. How long's left? 25 minutes? Something like that. As well as Rutherford is doing, we can't help but feel Hemel would be better off not aiming for the fence behind the goal or directly at Alfie's chest. Regardless, the standing goalkeeper is growing in confidence. And he's not the only one. Jimmy Mewitt specifically requested that we show what he regards as his greatest ever tackle. No! Leave the ball! No! Leave the ball! Stand up! Get to the ball! No shots! Falling floor, I love that. Listen, listen to me. Listen. Oh, shy! Shy! 
Bobby, left back. Bobby, left back for a minute. It is to Dorking's credit that they're still trying to kill the game, but in doing so, they're wiping themselves out like a self-aware whiteboard with arms. David, work him! David, work! No, he's, mate, he's got to give him a breather, though. He's going to have to have breathers, mate. Oh, no. Go on, go on, go on. I think the time for that bit, Beardy. Yeah. Last last six, seven minutes of Arsenal will put it all in. Yeah, Let yeah. him have his breathers, yeah. so he'll be more effective when we get a third goal. Yeah, OK, mate. The flying quaver is the first to go down with cramp. Fortunately for Jimmy, Mark is keen to bring on Sammy El Ab to see the game out anyway. Sammy! Let's go, mate. Hurry up, mate. Give him two minutes. Dan! Before he gets onto the pitch, Sammy's going to need to remember that he's left his shirt in the dressing room. Oh, you've turned up, have you? Where's Sammy going? What's Sammy doing? Has he not got a kit? Sub! What's he Sub! He ain't got Sub! a top. He ain't got his top's gone, he's gone inside to get his top. Oh my fucking days. What's he oh, like, man? How can you have his, he should have his shirt on. Fucking hell, mate. Should have his shirt on. Jimmy! He needs to come back on. Jimmy! We're down to nine men. Jimmy! Jimmy, come on! Go on, he needs his shirt. Let him on! Hey, wait, Mitch, tell him. Tell him, Mitch. He needs to come on. Is he's it on. worth stopping him and David? Bobby, shoulder. Brilliant, get up! Oh! Mano! No, no, stop! Half an hour. If it's cramp, he should be alright for a couple of minutes, no? Go on, mate, you've got to start to go. Where's the buffalo? Sammy, you want to wind up? Shattered and cramping up, Mewitz fills in while Sammy gets dressed. And Hemel sets about doing what they do best, hitting the ball directly at Alfie to make him look like a hero. Put down at right back, OK? Yeah. And Sammy looks rather relieved to have found his shirt. Dorking dropped deeper and deeper, allowing Hemel to control the ball. They're finding plenty of space in the middle third and spreading the play. Yes, get there, Bob! Get there! No crosses! Get there, Niall! Next one! Get Next the one! It has taken 18 minutes, but at last, Joash Nemhard has found a way to put the ball past Alfie Rutherford. Rutherford's dreams of a clean sheet shattered. David, come on, last 10! David, come on, last 10! Hemel now believe a point is within their grasp, and many of the Dorking players are burning out. Ed's got cramped. Get round now! You love that, Dan. Keep the ball! Keep the ball! Be, be strong! Second! Don't press. Got to get get to the ball! Oh, fuck it. Out five! That side! With just a handful of minutes left, Dorking are trying to wind the clock down. Although Ed Harris's distress is sincere, his legs aren't willing to go as far as his mind. Ed's got Ed's Ed's done. Ed's fucked. Put him as a centre half, yeah. Oh, Isaacin. Yeah, but do you know what though? Do you know I'd leave him. He's only heading. I'd leave him. He's only heading. I'd leave him. Don't get us out of shape. No, no. Hey, just leave him. Leave him. Leave him in there. He's all right. Five minutes. Five now. Go on, Josh, to the ball! Runners, boys. Brilliant! Oh, Go on! I fucking love that. You've got the clock, yeah? Yeah, I'm on it. Offside, Lino. Oh, don't let him go. Get him out, mate. Alan, Alan got one go. Get him out, mate! Get up! Get up! Stand Get up! Up! up. Win it! Don't win it! Get up! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Organise! 
Drill in there, drop in there, drop in there. No fouls, no fouls. In the box, Callum, Sadly, head, full two. Well done, Bobby. Mark, you've got Mark. Mark, they're playing short. They've done it short. Brilliant head, brilliant head. Hemel goalkeeper Craig King is up for the corner. The visitors are almost out of chances and they know it. Love that, Davy. Get there, Bob. Get there, Bob. Shooting, isn't he? Two exactly. Boys. One. Fucking love that. Oh, no, it's calm. He was taking it. Get on the ref. Ref! A minute and a half. Switch on. Switch on. to go. Ball, all right, ball, ball, ball. We are. Give it to them, give it to them. What's up? Oh, that side! Isaac! Isaac! Best we're done! Best we're done! Best we're done! I've got 40. Who's, make sure we're messed up! Callum! Callum! Away it goes! Away it goes! Get up! Go on, David! Go on, David! Work it! Go on, Bob! Go on! Stay in front of me! Go on! The man's gone, Bob! David, you're going to have to come in on the two! Bobby, leave it! Rest the gun! Rest! Rest! Bobby! Turn! Bobby, up here! While Sammy and Nemhard have a polite discussion, the Dorking bench discover that their nearest challengers have both lost. Dorking are three points clear at the top of the league again. Fucking magnificent, mate. Hey, that's the win of the season, mate. Win of the season. <laughs> Well, as the saying goes, all you can give is all you got. That's how football works. I thought it was, it was brilliant, just start to finish, 87 minutes with a centre forward in goal. That makes all the headlines. You make the headlines tonight. Well done. 
Well done. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm over the moon with that. Great resilience. Got what we deserved. You know, big time. First half, we created a lot of chances. That is as outstanding as you'll get. That is as outstanding as you will get in football. To do that for 87 minutes with a striker in goal is as good as you will fucking see. That goes on the same page as the Agnil haven't. You won't forget that. That's a big deal what you've done today, boys. I'm very proud of you. Very, very proud. You left everything out there, right? That was fucking outstanding. I've got to tell you, for, to a man. So if I sit here for another half an hour, all I do is say it was outstanding. It's as simple as that, okay? So, well done. Get yourselves a beer, lads. Unbelievable. Brilliant. <laughs> Well, now we're just going to be fucking huge on Saturday. Looks that way, doesn't it? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know what say is, if I have one criticism of them, I don't think they should have been shooting on sight. And they weren't. They kept pushing it. They were shooting, weren't they? So, I don't know what it was, 16 weeks ago, whenever it was, when Slav got injured, you were on the bench and you were like, I can do it. Where did that come from? Um, well, it wasn't me, to be fair, it was Dino. Dino said, Alfie can go and go. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll just will then. And then I've had to stick by my word, so. I fucking love him, mate. <laughs> <laughs> fucking brilliant, son. Um, didn't hesitate. No, no, well, so when the gaff turned around and went, you're going in goal, I was like, well, I've got to stick by it now. I can't, I can't go back on my word, so. So I'm going to be quizzing him in a bit about why he doesn't name Slav on the bench, because he's a fine margins manager and all that. So I think he must just assume you can do it. And you can. <laughs> When's the last time you actually played in goal? Probably when I was, at, I think I did it once when I was at Portsmouth. Um, my goalie got injured, I think I went in goal once then. But not in a competitive men's game. I've never been in goal, so. Well, I think it's one of those, isn't it? I think um, we've got a big squad, so we go down the route of no one would dare get sent off here because they'll be sacked so, um, uh, or get injured. But, you know, I think you're probably not wrong, Rich. I think that's why now you should be a part of our management team because if you're in a title run and playoff race, marginal could be marginal stuff. But it weren't meant to be that way today. We weren't supposed to have Slav on the bench. Slav weren't supposed to go and goal, you know, and then we would have readjusted what we'd done and took off maybe David and we had a great game. And today was meant to be the centre forward going in goal for 87 minutes. Fans go home, up the town buzzing. And, um, you know, we live to fight another day, literally. How are you feeling right now? Um, good, tired. I feel like I need to go to bed, but um, no, really good. I think I'm really proud, to be fair, uh, to play in the team that you saw today how hard we work for each other and just the commitment for each other was like the reason why I play football so like that team collective goal and today like these are the wins that you actually remember in four or five years whenever I reflect on past wins it's always the ones where like we've had to dig in and really work for each other so I'm really proud of the lads like it's a great feeling um, but still there's a long way to go there's 10 games to go but I think this one we can enjoy it and then move on to Tuesday. I, uh, I can't tell you how nervous I was when I first went in goal. Uh, I'll tell you what eased it off is when that first shot down in that goal hit me straight in the face. I thought it and hit it, your face. <laughs> it did hit me in the face. Um, <laughs> and then after that, I sort of calmed down a little bit. I was like, oh, maybe I can do it, but pure luck, but it did calm me down. And then obviously the goal went in and then they're chucking balls in the box, 90th minute, and I'm thinking, please someone head it because I don't want it to come towards the goal. <laughs> Every time the ball went near him I tried to block other players and I said that to the lads as well and then even when they're shooting I'm just thinking I've got to try and block it as much as possible because it must be horrible. It's a lonely place of being a goalkeeper. You've got to be so like on the ball with concentration. Um, I was just worried that one might go through his hands or through his legs um, and it wouldn't be his fault. Like. <laughs> But um, yeah, it was like more of a protection thing, especially because I've known Alf for a long time. So I was like, let's just try and block block everything we can and just do, do the best we can as a team to help him. You pretty much defend him for 90 minutes. I mean, we had obviously had our chances, but you defend him for 90 minutes, trying to close down, like make sure it make it t tough for them. Like when you when you win, like it makes it that much sweeter, and obviously makes all that effort worth it. Obviously, when you went when they went down to 10, 
You must have been pretty excited about the situation. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. To be fair, um, after um, after they got their keeper sent off, I thought, right, this is our chance. See, we've been working um, the last weeks for, for this game, and I was thinking, you know, like we, we looked pretty sharp the first like, couple of minutes. So I was thinking, right, right, we can we can take this game, but obviously football is how it is, and sometimes it doesn't go as planned. When you stooped to head the ball about six inches off the ground, um, what was going through your head at that point? I just thought, I'm probably not going to get there with my foot, so what, what's the quickest way to get there? And just chuck my head at it. But <clears throat> again, it was more down to like, all the lads kind of passed that on to each other, I think. We all encouraged each other. And you'd see Jimmy make a tackle that I've put two people in the air with that tackle as well that you'd never see. So. I think it just came from that. Everyone wanted to put their bodies on the line and work for each other. And that's kind of, yeah, like, wasn't thinking about stuff like getting kicked in the head or what potentially could be the outcome. It was, let's just get the ball away from the goal as quick as possible and make sure that we get the win. What did you make of that then? Uh, oh, well, I called Alfie for a hat-trick before the game, didn't I? So, <laughs> probably not my best shout. It's getting goal um, after three minutes. <laughs> unbelievable game to come down yeah, to watch there. Uh, Perfect. Really good. Worth Perfect. the 180 miles in the car, that's <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because we won, I've loved, I've lo I loved it. To be fair, it was a, uh, it's, it's enjoyable. It actually is enjoyable. I mean, for me, it was a bit of, I suppose, a bit of a free pass. Yeah. Because I'm not goalie, so. But I mean, the main thing today was the three points, and yeah, I, I mean, we just got to kick on from now, and hopefully, I won't have to go and goal no more. We could have, could have tested him a bit more. Um, obviously, like when you've got like uh, a striker playing in goal. You, you, you're thinking, right, we got to shoot more, we got to test them and, you know, and um, I think that's what we lacked a little bit today. Within a couple of minutes, you, you realise, OK, I can't be running all over the all, all over the place today, making those third man runs, etc. Me and Josh have pretty much just got to sit in, try and obviously stop the ball into their number seven, who was trying to drop into pockets, cut that out while also putting enough pressure on their man so he, he, he didn't try and drive with it so it's, it's one of those you sort of trying to play those sort of half positions where pretty much yeah you try you're trying to stop them from playing but also when we get the ball being able to break out and give it either give it to da david jimmy like uh wheeler and then trying to support them because obviously with 10 men you give it to your wing and you like try and beat three men it's, <laughs> it's it's not ideal so like it's one of those you've got to try and sit in a pocket and then Break out from there. And the yeah, gaffer! And the gaffer! Oh, yeah! Oh, right! It's done now, mate! You don't hear that! It's done now, just saying, it's a bit of a wondrous spirit. Yeah, hey, oh, mate. Fun, mate. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. We lost again. He mate. forgot yeah, his cap as well. He forgot his cap as well. He's got the cap out. It's in the car, mate. I left it in the car, Joe. It's a wondrous spirit. It's what you need to do. Absolutely. What does Saturday night look like in the Ed Harris household after a day like that? whatever my missus has plans to be fair. So um, we'll probably sit down and have some dinner tonight. And then to be honest with you, we've got game Tuesday. So it's all about resting and recovering. So yeah, we will enjoy it. I'll probably have a beer or two, some decent food, and then get up tomorrow, walk the dog and go again. So uh, not not to get too high, but I think we, we've got to enjoy it, of course, but I'm getting old now. So the, the nights of going out and partying is definitely behind me. But again, I, I still get that feeling inside me where I feel on top of the world. My missus will say it as well. Whenever I come back from a win like that, I'll be in the best mood ever. Um, so she's going to be a happy person as well tonight. I mean, after a game like that, I'll just rest. Uh, as soon as we get the, the footage, I'll probably watch the game. I think what, what I could have done better, what the team could have done better. Obviously, tomorrow recovery and then Monday we go again. Prepare for the next game. That, that's, how it, that's how it is in football. You've got to keep moving. You can't just, you know, think about the, the past. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably go and have a, a you know 10k run or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Followed by about 15. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to top it all. But yeah, 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 no. nah. yeah. A couple of beers, nah, a few a beers, yeah. watch some football and a bit yeah, of food and a yeah. few more beers and yeah. see what happens. Yeah, good day so, out. So. No, good day out. Honestly, unbelievable experience. Yeah. Great to meet you guys. Yeah, Great to meet Mark and everyone's made us feel welcome. Yeah. Football club, very family sort Orientated of. Orientated. Yeah, it's this good. Is pro proper non-league, mate. Yeah, we've loved good it, mate. So really good. Uh, no, I don't ever want to do that again. But if if the uh, challenge comes, um, I'll definitely be up for it. At 1-0, because we had a, quite an early goal, it was a case of just stay in the game, do what you're doing. Get a second goal at a brilliant time, stay in the game, do what you're doing. And then at 2-1, it was a case of how soon can it fucking end? <laughs> That's it. 
Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. There's a few ways you can help the show continue. You can hit the like button, the subscribe button. You can leave a comment. You can buy us a coffee. That's the thing where you can make like a little micro payment to help out. Um, and you can subscribe to us on Patreon where you get extended episodes. This week's comment of the week comes from Uncle Raul, who said, if Dan Gallagher doesn't want it on his left foot, why has he stood there for restarts? It's a really good point, Raul.